Beep 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 Ah, like that one auntie said, it sounds like robots having sex music. Hello. Good morning. Actually, good afternoon. It could be good night. It could be good evening. It could be anything. Hello, you beautiful soul. And welcome to another Lekka Live with me, Etienne David. I'm so happy to do this and i'm so glad that you came to sit in pull up a chair we for 30 minutes every day all we do is connect share learn and maybe have a little bit of a conversation please feel free to let us know hi where you're from in the comments um, also consider joining the community like you can decide let this be the the run through take this one time that you have now been brought by the universe to this specific page because whatever it is that you're going to be getting from here that I don't even know about it's been waiting for you and if you can feel something resonate with you and you're like hey this is like my kind of people and they're like all about love and light and amazingness and learning and you know like constructive trying to fix the shit that's broken in our society after this episode consider clicking the link in my bio where there's an opportunity to connect with our community offline on Telegram, where we could lick and talk about what you're making for supper. We can find out when people make you lists, and there you can sort of get ideas for what you're making for supper tonight. Uh, and also where we continue the conversation of the daily lives com uh, uh, topic that we had. So there's a lot that I said today, but I'd like to hear what you've got to say. So make use of the chat box. Don't break that screen protector when you're making the harkis. Uh, but welcome to Let's Talk About Tech. Before I start with the Let's Talk About Tech, baby, let's talk about tech, DD. Uh, I just want to share a story with you guys that's a little bit personal, uh, but that was too bloody funny. Listen, it is something that is like one of those kind of stories that I will probably end up working into one of my comedy things, but... I'm sitting at my desk. I work from home. I, I provide like remote services from uh, consultations to like brand management, brand building, online digital marketing strategies, all that kind of stuff, right? So, so I, I a lot of the time am servicing clients that are from all over the world, right? Because the beauty of working online is like your province. Or your state, or your country at all. Nobody's not trying to. But nobody's right about me. The number you have dialed is not available at present. Please later. Please note that your call is important. Anyway, so uh, I kind of interactions at different times of the day, and sometimes in the evening when my baby girl comes home. Sometimes just before supper or just after supper or when it's not my turn to give her a bath, then I will sit and I'll quickly get prepped for my night routine, which is like work till three in the morning. So I sit here and, and I've got a scheduled call with a potential agent. By the way, in the link, you'll find an opportunity for you to work from home remotely at your own pace, earn some money, uh, literally just creating connections in the stuff that you're interested in and with the experience that you have. Anyway, uh, more details of that in the link. But, 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 so I'm, I'm connecting with this potential agent, right? And now I'm just explaining to them. I'm like, yeah, Yo, no, you know what it really is. Like, if you have to understand it, like in marketing terms, it's like generating leads and, uh, and, and I'm busy talking and I see the door open and here comes my little princess. Mind you, she's two and a half years old, right? 
two and a half years old comes like, dun, 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 and his daddy's like, um, yes, and and something that's important, I notice her. I'm like, okay, shit, I've got to be mindful of what's on my table. What can she reach the bong? Can she get the scissors? Is there like something that she could just be like, what's that, daddy? And she comes around, and I'm like, uh, well, this is the best way to answer you is and here she comes like right up and i've got the phone on speaker in front of me because i like to be free like that because i talk with my hands as you can clearly see and here comes marley to daddy and she's like daddy and i'm like yes my baby i'm like oh i'm so sorry uh that's my daughter uh but like i was saying she's like daddy i want to see daddy's penis i'm like oh my god what what are you doing baby why are you saying this for rare while daddy is on the call here now, he wants to stop. And then she's like, penis, penis. <laughs> I wanted the earth to swallow me and to chew me up. Because all I could think of on the other side of this call, this guy's been thinking, yeah, this, this guy's child is saying penis. And the thing is, it's only because she's now started to make connections with things that she has seen. Like, for example, if she notices when a truck drives past and there's that big egg, egg um, advert on the thing then she'll be like look daddy eggs i'll be like yeah great eggs and then she'll be like a chicken goes puck, puck, puck. i'll be like oh yeah and then she'll say oh mcdonald i'm like wow brilliant my daughter has been given information and we have taught her enough to connect the dots and she's yeah he will say no compra van daddy's penis if you work from home and you've had this kind of experience or anything similar or uh, please share your story but that's not why we're here today. We're here to talk about tech, baby. <laughs> oh, my word, I died. I, was, I shouted to my I went immediately to my wife. After the call, I was laughing. But <laughs> Yes, and this is try to be serious after that. Anyway, technology could be the downfall of humanity has saved us and since the invention of the wheel and the discovery of fire propelled us into a entirely different type of society we've gone from and and this is just like to give a little bit of a perspective like we've gone from playing outside having contact with your neighbors and knowing who your neighbors and friends are from school and walking to school being safe and like spending time outside, sleeping with your doors open and whatever, to a generation where from your mobile phone, you can not only monitor the cameras that have been set up throughout your entire house, but you are literally able to activate and interact with devices from the fridge to the locks, to the lights, to the temperature of the geezer, to appliances, and in the space of what seems like just a few days. Because <laughs> honestly, with Moore's law and the advancement of technology happening every 18 months, it's all, it becomes obsolete because it's just in, it, it, like literally it betters itself. We are seeing things that we might have dreamt of. Maybe, maybe you might have been like one of those kids that was like playing with a little toy car and you're like, oh yeah, brr, brr. and then you open the doors and you're like, whoa, now it's flying. Look at my flying car. We have flying car prototypes if you have the money. There are let me just quickly give you guys a bit of perspective before we dive into all of the tech that's available and how amazing it is and all of this stuff. I just want to give you an idea of adoption. And this is like to help you understand how long it took society as a whole. That means everybody, like the same way that you would see at a corner where it's not strange, regardless of what the time of the day is, somebody looking down with a light shining in their face. It's so commonplace but do you know that it took 12 years for the mobile phone to be adapt, adopted? The internet, which I said the other day, is only about, about 50 or so years old, a little bit older than 50 years. It took seven years to adopt the internet. A lot of people were still convinced, like, no, 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 the internet is, internet's a fad, man. It's rubbish. It's nothing. It's not going to really, nobody's really going to do that. I am convinced you need to use pen and paper and you want to meet a person and shake his hand and look at that. Where are we at now? The whole world is functioning online. We cre recreated an entire planet 2.0 online that you can literally go buy property in, create an e economy for, uh, for yourself where you can generate your own mint, your own coin, literally play Earthsum on the internet. Anyway, our favorite friend from the Zucks, you know, they must have changed their name to the 
Met a bitchy extra cost schedule advertencies of my post. Now you know that place that everybody was obsessed with with the Khasakhi and the Khabu. Now them, do you know how long it took? Now we were already advancing a little bit. It took it took four years. Remember how people were like, Ni Fatsa, why would you want to no, that's ridiculous. Why would you want to do that thing? Ni even that's just for four years. And then all of a sudden it was like, no, 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 just check out my thing. Check out my page. Oh, let me add you. Oh, are we friends on that thing? No. Hey, I'm telling you, WeChat came out and changed the game. This is like around the time if you want to just expose yourself in terms of your age, like when Mixit was the ultimate in instant messaging because it cost you like 0.01 cents to send an instant message as well as an image. And that was like the, the beginning of the beginning. I can't answer it anymore, or my wife, I'm just very jammer. Listen, I feel like I'm going to be a lot more. As this is what you know. Okay, true caller, who is this? I don't know who this is, but you... Set aside to just wait until we're done here. And if it's urgent and there's something I can do about it, make sure that I'm capable of doing something about it after this. Anyway, so we took a year. Last one, Pokemon Go. Remember that thing that was causing chaos and all sorts of ridiculousness all over the place? People busy walking around with their phone and they're like, no, no, what you doing? Nah, after Pikachu, people are Pikachu. It took... 19 days, 19 days for the entire population of the first of countries that have the infrastructure to be able to take advantage of this augmented reality game on your mobile phone, 19 days. And right now, if you look at the progression that we have made in terms of technology, you're sure we've got amazing social connectivity platforms and apps that allow you to instantaneously connect with like-minded people anywhere around the world at your convenience at low cost. We've never before ever in our history as a human race been this connected with each other ever, 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 wherever you're from. Let me know where you're from in the, like you would, ne you would never rewind 50 years, just 50 years, half a century ago. You would never have been like, yeah, I've, I, I know a couple of people that's from France, Denmark, the US, from Italy, from Spain, from South Africa that live in Australia. I know some guys from China. Oh, there's these kids that I game with on Minecraft and they are literally from the UK. I mean, 50 years ago, 50 years ago, you'd never be like, so what's your friendship? No, I know PT from down the road. Yeah, uh, we, we kind of grew up together. His mother and my mother were kind of friends and actually... Um, we call each other's uh, um, like male figure, uncle, brother, dad, because he is kind of like our uncle, brother. No, that's a bit of an incest joke. Sorry. But, but technology has gotten really ridiculously advanced. And, and we're now in a stage where reality, distinguishing between has been made by someone, ones and zeros, and what is real is becoming even more difficult. I don't know how familiar you are with the, the what's that engine called? The Unreal Engine, Ooh! the things we can literally simulate and replicate in a virtual world. So much so that it is almost indistinguishable from real life is ridiculous and it's happening right now. Not tomorrow, not yesterday, not in like 50 years from now. No, not just the, the, the hype. And I know there's conspiracy around like the space travel and everything. We'll get to that. But Elon Musk and... SpaceX and Ta uh, uh, what's this guy, uh, Tesla, are pioneering technologies that are going to become commercial, really friendly. The same way that I'm being able to walk into a shop right or an engine garage late at night and just pick up a delicious gram of northern light, two grams of northern uh, lights or a little bit of this at my convenience because the law has led to the times and that we've realized that there are things that we thought hinder us that actually advance us. And the same is true with technology. Whether we've gone to space or not, I care. I understand. Yes, I get it. We could be spending our money on trying to resolve the issues in terms of, oh, how are we going to feed the people? But let's think about this. If we talk about space travel and you're saying we're going to go and colonize other planets and you're like, oh, but these people here on Earth, they don't know. There is no way that, you're, that they're going to decide on figuring out just how to get there and not figure out how to stay. So that means in a, on a planet where there's no atmosphere, we have technology, we have theorems, we have devices, there are that are working on ways of creating atmosphere, which sure, in hindsight, you're like, yeah, but I mean, they should be, but the techniques and the things that they are learning and they are able to apply successfully 
on a planet that has zero will do wonders for our planet. I mean, we would be able to be like, ah, atmosphere, our ozone layer hole, reset. Respect, let's do this over. Talk about food cultivation and creating life and finding water. Our planet is covered in water with giant islands, floating dirt piles that we don't really know how to clean up. But there are people that have designed self-sufficient that float around the ocean, collecting all the crap that you care about because you don't recycle, because you don't, you're like, ah, oh, someone else's problem. Oh, I'm not gonna really do my own part and at least just separate my trash. Oh, you know what? I'm not gonna actually make a conscious decision and not just buy PVC and plastic and those kind of things that have like toxic chemicals and things. I'm gonna make it, I know it's gonna cost me a little bit more and, and it's gonna actually mean that I must remember to take my bags with me, but you don't do that. So that stuff is floating and somebody is making a plan to actually fix it, but that's not enough. We're in an age and in a time where you can literally generate water from the planet that's covered in water that we can't really drink all of it, 70, 80% of it, we can't even drink it. They're gonna figure out a way to make water available. There is no water. What would that do for our people that don't have access to water and sanitation? Anyway, I'm just saying, there is a fine line and a definite conversation that needs to be in terms of ethics and our morals and what does it impact on us? and how do we go about it in terms of exploitation and making sure it's equitable because you're like, okay, it's in this cool tech, like you've got 5G technology that a lot of people are afraid of and a lot of people are for and a lot of people don't understand. I feel like go and do your own research. Don't even listen to me. Don't even listen to what I have to say. Hear it, be like, hey, I reckon there's something there. I might want to just confirm that for myself and go and learn for yourself. Choose sources, find out, sift through all the noise and decide for yourself. But with 5G technology, do you know what that will mean? Let's take your favorite activity, gaming, and we look at the barrier to entry, which is the price of a console, the price of the add-ons, the price of the game. If you no longer have the physical restriction <clears throat> of having to choose between this device and that device and this brand and that brand, because everything lives on the cloud in an in, in, on, on a cloud infrastructure and the only thing you need is an interface something literally like a screen ultimately to interact with the cloud you're not restricting somebody from being able to access the joy that you get from playing and uh, the latest next gen devices you can have anyone from anywhere only see the barrier instead of the multiple uh, uh, doors that were shut just the one to getting one interface device to help me connect with the cloud now you're looking at internet speeds that will allow you to not only take advantage of it, but actually contribute. We have the metaverse, which I'm sure you've heard so much about. And oh yeah, virtual reality and all Look, there's a lot of hype and a lot of people are going to be feeding you things just to try to get you in because there's early adopters that have spent a crap ton of money setting up the eco, uh, economic ecosystem in this whole thing because they want to make money off of you because at the core of it all, we live in a capital, capitalistic society. They want to make money off of you. No matter how good your idea is, no how positive your information is, it's always going to be driven by like how much money can we actually make out of it. But when you look into the benefits of the metaverse, of virtual reality, do you know how incredible it is to have the connectivity speeds of 5G, terabyte connectivity speeds, aligned with augmented reality, whereas in other words, you can connect virtual environments and tools and interfaces on a real-time IRL, in real life platform, and you can practically apply that? Surgeons. Someone on the other side of the world can use the robotic equipment in a surgery room that's connected by the high-speed connection that's using virtual technology and augmented reality to conduct a, a surgery that doesn't have to fly across the world, that you don't have to wait for. That guy could just be like, yeah, sure, I'm free this afternoon. Uh, I'm just going to put my daughter down quickly and do a quick heart transplant. There we go, VR goggles into this thing, and there you go. That is like, and, and the weird thing is that you might be thinking, oh, that's like a cool future. That's the reality we're living in right now. Here's some of the stuff that's already available today. <clears throat> that is blowing my mind about technology that you probably know about or that you might want to learn a bit more about. Autonomous cars, cars that drive themselves, park themselves, can get you to your destination. I'm talking about like put on Echanof and Ikap of Beaufort Vestu and I'm going to sit back and sleep. It's possible. Dis, oh my word. 
human augmentation. Now, I know you probably watch like Robocop and, and like The Matrix and a whole bunch of these other like cool cyborg and integration of... If you look at the way that other than the RFID chip and like, oh, you're going to have like a scan to pay because it's in your skin and then whatever. Other than those technologies, if, <laughs> if you look at some of the human augmentation that happens... I have a problem with my liver. My liver is failing. I can't find a donor. They can use stem cells. They can use tissue from my existing liver. Grow me a brand new organ and 3D print it even if maybe they don't want to, if they can't grow it. 3D print me a brand new liver that is con that genetically can matched to me and my blood type that they can just re-op and reinsert and there I go. You're thinking... Oh, it's with eyes that can see in the dark and that's got like super strong arms that bend cars in half. Having the ability to to take care of problems, hearing that, oh my goodness, you're, you were in an in accident. And I know this is like really extreme and I will go to like cosmetics of it because that is a reality. But you're in a car accident and, they, and that you lose all of your function of your, your lower limbs, your spine, your spinal injury. They can replace all of the rest of that with either genetically grown and matched copies, grow you a brand new leg, <laughs> or 3D print or design one with genetic or biomaterials that can function exactly in the same, that can reconnect the nerve endings by using nanotechnology so that it still allows you to feel anti- It is mad. Yeah, maybe in the movies, it is practically possible. There are people printing food, 3D. Human augmentation for cosmetics, sure. Imagine to, to, to change your nails or redesign your nails every because you have the technology that morphs and changes itself because it changes to the design that you've uploaded to your um, interface on your nails. And every day, every second, every minute, you can have the latest version of whatever is the hottest thing in nails uploaded onto your fingers and the technology will automatically adjust itself. Additional cosmetics. You have a problem with your skin. Insert a regrow your skin, regrow. Oh my word, there's so much different. Anyway, read about it. Augmented human technology is <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, let's talk about AI products. You know how difficult it is? Everybody is a writer nowadays. How difficult it is to actually try to not copy and paste from someone else. Do you know why everybody's a writer nowadays? Because of AI technology. You can literally take something someone else has written put it into a computer program that will rewrite it so that it will be the first version of that combination of words that you have ever seen and it can generate it with a plagiarism free article. We're the days of us having to focus on doing things that are remedial or that might be robbing us of being able to grow our society and become a better, well-connected, loving, earth-focused, love-powered race are getting closer and closer. As much you might feel like, oh, technology's cock and it's not going to help and oh, it's like it's, it's a huge thing because it's like going to put people out of work because now there's automation that's taking away people's jobs. Sure, at the beginning. But let's, let's think about this. Let's consider the scenario. Worst case. The most affected industry by COVID, by the pandemic, was the service industry. People that worked at tills, people that worked at shopping centers and malls, people that worked at restaurants, anywhere where you were having to have human interaction and contact with somebody, they struggled. I know because personally, my wife works in the service industry and it felt like the whole world was going to collapse in on us because it was like, shit, at least we can, nope, nope, can't rely on that. And hundreds of families that were reliant on people working in the service industry were crippled because there was no way to have human interaction. Now, that was a taste of what people assume is going to happen. But I want to tell you, maybe even for the first time you're hearing this, maybe you might consider it a warning, but it's already happening. The integration with removing human beings as an interactive point at those service areas is already happening. There are shopping centers in the States, sure. You might think you are overseas. Here in South Africa, already there are shopping centers that have self-checkouts. Mark your mind, you fool. Come to retail yourself. You even ask yourself, plastic. And you're like, yeah, plastic. And then you put your own sake in, in the card, mash, tap, check, or save. You do the whole shebang yourself and you walk out. They're already trying to do this with the restaurants. They've been 
pre, pre training us with the drive through system where you just speak to a robot person on the other side, pay without using real money, and then just collect without seeing the process. It's already happening. And the thing is that at the beginning, there's going to displace a lot of people's jobs, but it's going to free up our time and our focus and our resources on, on trying to create new economies, new op- Look at what's happening with NFTs. There are things that if you, if you are not uh, familiar with the NFT or the blocks chain or with uh, uh, how cryptocurrencies and how all of that, go and do a little bit of research. But this is really starting to help what is going to become a creator economy. There's too much. I'm, I think I'm rambling. I feel like I'm not giving enough value here. And I'm just talking about the, all the different things that interest me. But I'd like for you to do a little bit of digging. Tell me what kind of technology you've been involved with. Text-to-speech, um, um, in-home integration, um, AI, uh, any sort of devices that are integrated to your across platforms, things that help you function better. Let me know in the comments. Ek dank ek nuga ramble. If you want to actually get the sources of the stuff where I've seen it, you'll find it in the Telegram group after the live. I share uh, all the stuff that I've had there. We continue the conversation in the Telegram group. The link is in my bio, uh, as well as some uh, information uh, on how to get some income opportunities, working from home, leveraging off of technology. Uh, in other words, working remotely and having internet and from your phone or your laptop, this, that stuff's in the, in the bio as well. But I'm going to go straight to the comments, which is my favorite part of the whole day, and find out what your view is. What do you have to say about technology, baby? And also to find out if you have any questions or if there's anything that I can maybe help you. Or maybe you're an expert and you're just like, hey, Etienne, listen, direct people to my thing. I know. So let's quickly go. Uh, hi and welcome. Of course, that's the first thing we have to say. Naz, yes, it's like pew, pew, pew. I'm gonna when I get to the stage, listen, you can, you can, you can, you can in your brain screenshot and screen record what I'm about to say. I, Etienne Davids of Sound, Mind, and Body, say the following statement at my own volition. I am. The moment I get into the stage where it's like, oh, where guys, I've got some merch and whatever. People like Nas, people like Aisha, people, people like Teddy, people like Dills, people like Ashanti, people, I mean, people like Kigo that are always here. Whether you're here now or later or you join in a different one, you're always here support. You are the first people that will have to get access to whatever is in the store or whatever is available in the range. You have to get everything because you're just amazing and you are beyond MVP. The amount of support and love that you give me through your time, your energy, your connectivity, your questions, your interactions. If I could pay you for watching, I would. And literally that's what's gonna be possible in the creator economy and the technology that we're looking at. Where shares, comments, and uh, likes, all that stuff, buying stuff, it's gonna be possible. And I'm hoping to take everybody there. So all right, I'm just gonna skim through all the, the stuff because I can see, Whoa, oh no, oh my word, oh my goodness, you guys are still tripping about the story with my daughter. Yeah, if you missed it, hopefully you'll be able to catch the replay tonight. Uh, the previous replay from the, um, from the m- mental well-being, uh, apparently there was technical issues. I don't know what that means, but it was not saved. So, I don't know, TikTok, I'm waiting for you to explain and let me know what one there, but we keep moving on. So, if, if, I, if I should be able to, i uh, upload this on YouTube. You can check the link in my bio. Uh, I thought of cell phones... Uh, were for boogie, uh, bougie people when it came out. True, right? And you had like a Musa phone. But now they are even smaller and they're going back to being even bigger. Folded. You can now fold yourself, Owens. You can fold your phone screen without breaking it. I remember Pro did just before Mick. It. Now you see, Teddy is exposing how old he actually is. exposing Mr. Tell me, where will you be mine? How's it, my Bruce? <laughs> nice to have you here. Uh, this mixer gave me some people's license to cheat from their couch. Listen, mix it was a thing that created a lot of the catfishing and the sneakiness and the whatever. It was the original training ground for blesses and side what insert gender here. <laughs> but it also taught us that we don't have to just 
stick to the rules of what an SMS is. That's the thing that you have to use to message. No, people are like, you know what, screw it. And you know what's really interesting? Mixit was developed in Stellenbosch by a group of students from the Stellenbosch University. <laughs> South Africa. Anyway, uh, they were like, no, disrupt this. Let's, we can do it. You can do anything. That's the power of the, what your mind and what you're capable of. When Mixit came out, I was online all night and couldn't get up for school. <laughs> Remember, please call Mixit. One must call for log in, two must call for Nike, miss your money. <laughs> Those were the days, the way we had to navigate social media. And out of that, you got instant notifications, click on see first, follow, like, subscribe. All that shit was born out of somebody just taking the gamble of like, I don't want to do it like this. There has to be another way. Uh, so true, the people I, get, uh, I game with has become my family thanks to the internet. You know how amazing the gaming community is? The gaming community is a lot less toxic than a lot of what you see in, in like, a, a people, and, and please, if, you, if you're a first time listener, I'm not saying this to try to provoke a response, but a lot of the things that you see, and I'm not just talking about here, a lot of the things that you are in contact with that take your attention are there to distract you. And what better way to distract you than something negative because it's easy to jump on to that. It's easy to add to something negative because it's like something that you're pre-programmed to do in your own life. But to add something positive, it's a little bit more difficult because even when you do a bit of self-reflection, you're like, shit, I, I'm, like, I'm like lacking in certain areas or you know what, I'm a little bit sad, but you don't really go further than that. You just identify where the problems are. You just identify what the issues are. And then it's easy for you to just take in and absorb those signals that get sent to you. So when it comes to the gaming community, what most people see is just like, oh, people just swearing and then treating people like shit. But in reality, the gaming community is so loving. People share and become so tight. They become like family, like what we've become here in the FTV community. If you join the community, the Telegram group, you'll realize this is tr to be true. We become like family where it really is like you can get personal messages and it's not like, oh shit, it's almost like, why didn't I get a message today? I'm just like, well, okay. And there's the interaction with the rest of the community. It's that tight. Never met each other. So don't always... Anyway, so happy to have you here. Hi, sweet lady. Look at this community. This, these people, Aisha, you're such an amazing person. Your light shines bright. Now as your light, it's amazing to see that there's so many people that share the idea of just be... Be a creature of love. Be the change you want to see. It's incredible. If you want to be part of that community, consider it. Uh, we, we talk as though we know stuff with doing, without doing research. You know what I, I, li I love to do is I like to talk a lot, but I like to read too and check what other people are saying. And when I do that checking and that reading and that looking up and actually finding out, I keep quiet. Because I need to absorb, because I want to process. Because when I speak about it, I don't want to just speak about it because I'm like speaking about it. I want to speak from a place of like, I've seen what other people say and this is just my interpretation and my opinion. And a lot of the time we're so afraid of like what other people are going to think. But like even if you're wrong, rather have an opinion and then learn. And have somebody say, well, listen, uh, okay, Etienne, so, so check here just so that I can just correct you. AI doesn't really work like that. The way it works is it's a bunch of protocols or rules that people put together that automatically learn from interactions. So every time you say one plus one is two, it realizes, okay, these are the types of ways that I can get to that result. And this is the most efficient way. And every time when this person says one, they actually want the answer for one plus one is two, because that's what's been happening the whole time. So instead of them having to waste time, let me just, every time they type one, say two. And then it learns and it learns. That's what AI is. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Now I get it. And that's why they are integrating it. And I've already been using it with my predictive text. We think, oh, sorry, my predictive text. It's learned that these are the words that I frequently use. And it uses those as the ones that it suggests. Anyway, I'm just saying, do a little bit of digging yourself. It is insane what we can do. You can 3D print a house. Let me just throw that one in there. That's like tossing a grenade and then just walking away. All right, here's some stuff that you might not have known. You can 3D print a house. You can 3D print organs. You can print food. You are you are possible, there it's possible for you to experience in 7D the same type of interaction with something that is real. So by that I'm talking about holographic projection, audio um, design. You can sit in your house and everything you see will look so real but it's completely digital. Projections, audio, vibration, motion. There are robots 
that they have designed that are functioning right now that automate processes like delivering packages, automate factories where from one place to the other thing, there's no human intervention except for the monitoring where an entire factory is automated. To go even further to help you understand how deep this is, you can buy a fridge in your house that scans the barcode and reads the expiry date of the milk that can send you an update on your phone so that it can remind you that your milk is expiring soon. You're running low on eggs. This is the calories of the food that's in your, in your fridge. Plus, based on the app that you have that is designed to your nutritional diet plan as well as your weight loss plan, this is the optimal grocery list. Would you like me to order it for you from Checkers Online to deliver? You can do that right now. Technology is insane. Technology can really change your life. It is your responsibility to learn and it is your responsibility to explore it because the only time it will be the Terminator scenario is because you were asleep and you were ignorant and you left it in the hands of those that don't have your best interest in mind and they manipulated and used something with the potential to change humanity's story for the better to just help us circle back and become Atlantis. You've been amazing. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, quick shout outs to everybody while I scroll through the comments. Naz, Smith, awesome, love ya. Welcome and thank you for your support. Ashanti, love you, thank you so much for your support. Um, uh, Aisha, you're an amazing light. I love you too. Thank you so much for your support. Appreciate it. Uh, happening in lots of countries. Um, uh, appreciate all the links you share on the Telegram group. Thanks so much. Yeah, for sure. Consider it. Join the community and we continue the conversation there. Teddy, shout out. Jade, respect. Replay, if you've just met it, we'll be on YouTube a little bit later if TikTok allows. By the way, TikTok, ich wach noch, explain. Why is it when I was talking about distraction and when I was talking about people getting better and focusing on what wellness is and mental wellness is and then it's not depression and how much, why is it that all of a sudden that video I couldn't save to upload for a replay? I'm waiting for my response. Uh, anyway, uh, let's quickly go see as well. Unconditional love from my side. Winnie may betali anas Respect. So much for your love. Appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Uh, if, oh man, look at the usual suspects. I love it. I love everybody here. If you want to continue the conversation with us, join the Telegram group. Go and see some of the stuff. Oh my word, there's some gifts. Jade, thank you. Uh, you have to stay relevant with technology and develop. That is so true. You do. I didn't even see that. Thank you for the gift. Yes, like, you know why you need to focus on the present? Because it's a gift. And right now, I want to say goodbye. Thank you. Love, light, energy. All I wish for you for the rest of the, for the, rest of the day is clarity, peace, opportunity, joy, and freaking love. I'll catch you in the next one tomorrow, every day, live on TikTok, one o'clock for 30 minutes or so, replay on YouTube, connect with the community live. Yes, like, oh, it's merch cracks, proud to summer into the universe. You are amazing and you matter. I'll see you again next time. Peace, love, and happiness. <laughs> oh, thanks everybody for your contribution and your messages. I appreciate, love you. See you in the next one.